We talk a lot about how God is always opening doors, and I love that about God. But as I was studying for this message, I felt that there was something deeper than just God opening doors. There are moments when God opens portals. A door, when we think about it, even when we think about God opening doors, it may change something in our life, but when God opens doors, it doesn't always change our entire life. But when God opens a portal, it is an entrance into another dimension. Those of you who are fans of sci-fi understand that there are moments in science fiction when you're no longer in the same universe that you were once occupying because you entered a portal that gained you access to another dimension. And it is not often that God opens portals. These are moments that happen ever so often in our lives. As a matter of fact, most of us in the room have lived long enough to recognize that that just wasn't a phone call, that wasn't just a meeting, that when I met that person, God opened a portal. When I came to that church, God opened a portal. When I received that word, it was a portal. It was meant to take me into another dimension. There are some people in this room who don't even think the way they once thought, not because they just changed their mind on their own, but because they received one revelation and that one revelation was actually a portal that opened them up to a new way of being a new way of thinking a new possibility for what could happen for them and their family sometimes God opens doors but most of the time when our lives are radically changed he opens up portals when Jesus was walking through and he walked by and saw a young man and said hey I'll make you fishers of men if you follow me they thought that they were just meeting a man they had no idea that they had been introduced to a portal. And so when I began studying for this message, I was torn because I wanted to really dig into the reality that when God opens these portals for us, that we have to be sensitive enough to not miss the moment. We've got to be discerning enough to understand that this opportunity, this connection, this relationship is not just something I'm passing along the way. Who would we be if we treated every introduction like it had the possibility of being a portal? Because I think it's also worth mentioning that not every portal is connected to promotion. The portal is just the method that allows you access to another dimension. But where that dimension takes you doesn't necessarily mean that it's promotion. Sometimes there are portals that allow you access to things that are on assignment to destroy you. <laughs> That's why it wasn't just a heartbreak. It was a portal. Mm that gave you an awareness about darkness and destruction that you were never meant to have access to. That's why I'm careful about, I don't, y'all watch some scary movies if you want to, that's not for me. That's not for me. You talk about my faith, you, you talk about my salvation, you do what you need to do, but I don't play with the devil because, listen, I don't know what I'm getting access to. I don't know. You get to chanting something. Now I got to speak in tongues in the movie theater and ruin the movie for everybody because I don't play with them portals. I don't know where this is taking me. I can't trust everything I am exposed to because I recognize that some of these things are portals and you came to be entertained and now you're leaving afflicted because you didn't allow yourself access to something that was meant to take you into another dimension mentioned there were some things you were exposed to that you should have never been exposed to but because you were connected to somebody who you didn't realize was a portal in disguise now you're dealing with their devils and their demons because you're in a dimension that you were never supposed to be in I don't know about you but I got careful over my circle when I started realizing I wasn't just fighting my depression I was fighting their depression and now I'm in this mess with you because I allowed you to be my portal What do they get when they get you? Where are you taking them? 
Are you in a position where you can even allow someone access to the dimension of you and it make them better or are you making them more ill? Do you recognize that connection is a portal and can you stand by the dimension you're currently existing in? Because it's not just on them. It's on you too. And that's why you do yourself a service when you make sure that you are aware enough about what's happening in your spirit so that you're not preaching, teaching, pouring, parenting, loving, sexing with people, not realizing that you are really giving them access to a version of you that you don't even like, but misery loves company. And now we're sitting in this dimension of torment together because I didn't realize... This was a portal. Something to be said about us recognizing the power of connection, the power of opportunity to not just meet us, but to move us. When is the last time we took inventory of what is happening in our life and who was in our lives and asked ourselves, where are you taking me? Because your purpose only works in a certain dimension. Oh, Jesus, help me. Some of us fall for this belief that if I am anointed, I am anointed anywhere. Oh, God, this one even in my notes. But your anointing is assigned to a dimension. I'll give you an example. There are some people, not people you know, not people in this room, <laughs> who justify what they do by saying, well, Jesus sat with sinners and, and, drink, and drunks and everybody else. Yeah, but you have a drinking problem. And he was anointed to be in that dimension and you are not. You are not witnessing at the strip club, baby. You are not anointed for that dimension. And don't fool with the anointing and diluted by making the anointing fit your lifestyle instead of changing your lifestyle to fit the anointing. You don't work everywhere. Jesus told the disciples that if you go into a house and release your anointing, if they don't receive it, go into the other house because your anointing, you can't force your anointing into spaces where you are not called. If there is not capacity for your anointing, then move. Into a dimension where your anointing can align with the mission that God has assigned on your life. Don't cast your pearls amongst swines. You got the right pearls, but the wrong audience. <laughs> when we recognize that we have found ourselves functioning in dimensions that take us backwards, that shrink our anointings, that dilute our power. We are not without help. Because the truth is, though we can try and protect it as much as we desire, we're all gonna find ourselves, whether we realize it in the moment or not, sucked into dimensions where we lose focus on our anointing. Sucked into dimensions where the only thing we see is the depression. Sucked into dimensions where the only thing we see are our failures, our shame, our insecurity, our abandonment issues, our inadequacies. And most of the time if we trace our steps back, we see that that wasn't just one rejection, it was a rejection that unearthed all the other directions, and now I spiraled into a dimension that I cannot get out of. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. You can't, 
always get yourself out of these dimensions. I love affirmations. We have our children say affirmations every morning, but there are some affirmations that don't help us get out of the dimensions. There are some moments where that dimension is so heavy and so dark that we cannot get out of it. And so as believers, if you are a believer and if you are not a believer, I highly encourage you to tap into this truth that is helping us. It is not that we don't spiral into dark dimensions. It's that we understand the power of prayer is not just the place where we go and ask God to bless me, bless me, bless me. Prayer is transportation. Prayer is a portal out of this dimension and into the dimension I'm supposed to be in. Sometimes I start praying because I recognize I'm not in position. And sometimes I'm already out of position when I start praying but God is so good that he tells me if you humble yourself and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways I'll send an uber for you out of the place of destruction I'll send an uber oh Jesus I feel there's some oil on that that your prayer is sending up a GPS notification that says God here I am and I got sucked into some mess that I cannot get out of but help me Lord Lord I understand saying that I don't have to live this way. I didn't have to be stuck in this dimension, but I humble myself and I begin to pray that verse is in 2 Chronicles and it's very powerful. When you understand the dynamic of Israel and their relationship with God, you recognize that they kept finding themselves out of position over and over again. They would start dabbling with other religions, having sex with people they shouldn't be having sex with, worshiping other idols. They didn't even realize that they were worshiping other idols. And I just want you to know, just because you don't have stones and just because you don't have sage, it doesn't mean you're not worshiping other idols. If you are worshiping that worry, if you are worshiping that insecurity, if you are worshiping the idea of marriage, if you are worshiping the idea of being single, baby, you got an idol too. I know you think you're better than the other people because you don't have their idols, but everybody in here came in here dragging an idol. If you're worshiping success, if you're worshiping achievement, if you think you're only as good as your bank account, baby, you got an idol. But Second Chronicles 7 tells us that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face why am I seeking God's face because I'm in a dimension where I don't see God but God says if you start searching for me I don't care how dark the dimension is I don't care how long you've been in the dimension I don't care how many friends you got in the dimension if you start seeking my face God says I'll show up if you turn from your wicked ways you'll hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins I hear God saying, come out of the sunken place. I hear God saying that somebody got turned upside down. I don't know who, what the portal was that sent you into a dimension of darkness. I don't know what the portal was that sent you into a dimension of ego. I don't know what the portal was that sent you into a dimension of bitterness, but I hear God saying there is no dimension dark enough to keep me from finding you. There is no dimension wide enough to keep me from coming to you. But God says, I won't come unless you call. I won't betray our covenant. But if you call me, I'll answer. If you seek for me, I'll show up. I feel like preaching in this place because I understand what happens when we begin to call on the name of God. God says, when you can't get out of the atmosphere, you can shift the atmosphere. When you begin to shift the atmosphere, God, I can't break the addiction on my own. Have you ever seen somebody drunk but calling on the name of God? You can discredit them if you want to, but they recognize I'm in a dimension I can't get out of. God, if I could put it down, I would. But since I can't put it down, I'm asking you to meet me right where I am in this dimension, right where I am in this brokenness, right where I am in this pain. God, I need something stronger than the dimension I got sucked in. Prayer is my transportation. <laughs> Thinking about Paul and Silas, locked up in a prison cell. 
in one dimension, I'm restricted. But when I start worshiping, when I start worshiping, I invite heaven's dimension into my dimension. That's why that worship was so good this morning. Because I wasn't in my dimension on my own anymore. I invited heaven's dimension into my dimension. And when Paul and Silas said, I may not be able to get out of this cell. I may not be able to get out of these cuffs. But I could let worship meet me in the place of restriction. Then all of a sudden, the ground started shaking. You couldn't see it earlier, but every time you lifted your hands, I saw the ground started shaking. You didn't see it earlier, but every time you lifted your hands, I saw demons backing up off of you. You didn't know it yet because you've been carrying that weight for so long but when you started worshiping I saw chains being broken off of you you didn't realize it but you shook up the ground when you walk out of here you may have to walk a little differently because I hear God saying I shook up the ground that you're walking on I ordered your steps because when I shook up the ground it's not the same way that you used to walk anymore I That's why the enemy wants to worship. Because your worship changes the dimensions. That's why the enemy wants your tongue. Because your mouth changes the dimension. The power of life and death is in the tongue. So you decided to not speak death. But I hear God saying, did you speak life? You shut up on one end. But did you open your mouth on the other end? Because if you open your mouth on the other end, what you'll learn is that same power that caused you to shrink is the same power that will help you release the gift of God that's down on the inside of you. Let me tell you, let me tell you how cold God is. Some people in this room, and they drag themselves in this room, but they can't release their worship because they're in a dimension of so much pain that they can't even release it for themselves. It took everything they had to come into this room because they've been carrying trauma after trauma after trauma. But if one can chase 1,000, when worship releases in this room, it doesn't just change your dimension. It changes the entire dimension. That means if you can't lift your hands, I'll lift them for you. If you can't open your mouth, The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violence taken by force. You better watch who you sit next to because I hear God saying the dimension is about to shift. The dimension is about to go higher. Yes, you online. Yes, you online. Potter's House Dallas. Let's shift the dimension in Africa for a minute. Let's shift the dimension in London for a minute. I hear God saying we can shift it from right here. We serve notice on hell. I got a dimension to shift. I got a generational curse to break. I don't have that much time, but I just came here to let you know that when you shift the dimension, it's not just gonna change it for you. It's gonna change it for everything connected to you. Don't be surprised if your family starts acting different. Blame it on the dimension shift. Don't be surprised if the co-workers start acting different. Blame it on the dimension shift. Don't be surprised if the tears start flowing. Don't be surprised if the joy starts coming. Blame it on the dimension shift.
Shame's gotta go. Anxiety's gotta go. Depression's gotta leave me alone. I got a new dimension. Shift them, God. Shift them with their worship. Shift them with their praise. We make a throne in this place. Have your way, great God, that you are. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We break covenant with despair. We break covenant with bitterness. We break covenant with our fear. I'm walking in a new dimension. This dimension's about faith. This dimension is about miracles. Little mama, you jumping with that baby? You just jumped that baby into another dimension. Little mama, I don't know what you asking God for, but I hear God saying, you got to take that baby into another dimension. You got to break a generational curse before he says his first words. How about she She jumping, and you jumping for your baby, and you jumping for your marriage, and you jumping, and jumping, and you gonna leap and find yourself in another dimension. You better watch out when you clap your hands, cause you gonna look, and you gonna have wings. Oh yeah, I see you jumping. I see you jumping up there. I see you jumping. Where are we going? Where are we going? Is it healing? Where are we going? Is it wholeness? Where are we going? Is it a miracle? Where are we going? Is it breakthrough? Where are we going? Are we breaking a generational curse? I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going, I'm going. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And every time I worship, I get transported to another dimension. I'm going, I'm going. I'm going on earth as it is. In heaven, your kingdom come. Your will be done in this dimension. I'm not going to wait until I die to see another dimension. I'm going to see a dimension. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. <laughs> 